In today's video, I'm going to talk, talk about uh, the different types of steering gear systems uh, that you find on board ships. Now, previously I have made videos on the working system of autopilots and how it is linked to the steering systems. Uh, you can find those videos in the description section below. Today's video is going to focus on the steering gear system in itself and what are the different types and what are the different components associated with the steering gear system. So the steering gear system, uh, if I can sum it up for you, it basically comprises of the machinery, the rudder actuators, steering gear power units, and the means of applying torque to the rudder stock, which is necessary for affecting the movement of the rudder, which basically steers the ship in the desired direction. Now, before I go into the different types of steering gear, I will also talk about the components of a steering gear system. Uh, what is the main steering gear and the auxiliary steering gear and then I'll talk about the types of steering gear systems which basically comprises of the ram type electro hydraulic steering gear and the rotary vane steering gear. Uh, hopefully together with some pictures and my description and my notes for your examination it should be sufficient for you to prepare for your examinations. All right so the steering system in itself. So like I said before, in my previous video, I have talked about the uh, autopilot and how the autopilot is linked to the steering gear system. All right, in today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the steering system. The steering system usually consists of a steering gear, a control equipment, a rudder carrier, a rudder, and a rudder horn. The steering gear provides a movement of the rudder in response to a signal from the bridge which is transmitted from the autopilot. The control equipment conveys a signal of the ordered rudder angle from the bridge and activates the steering gear to move the rudder to the desired angle and that's how you steer the ship in the desired course. So a system used for steering the ship is basically a steering system. It is in constant use when the ship is underway and hence any failure or malfunction may result in some kind of a disaster or an accident or similar close quarter dangers. If you start thinking about the steering system, you must start thinking about the steering gear compartment. The steering gear compartment basically comprises of the machinery spaces, handrails and gratings or other non-slip surfaces shall be ensured to arrange or shall be arranged to ensure suitable working conditions in the event of any kind of hydraulic fluid leakage. Emergency escape shall also be arranged from this steering gear compartment. According to the SOLAS requirements, the Safety of Life at Sea Convention, SOLAS Convention, the steering gear compartment shall be readily accessible and as far as practicable separated from the engine room or the machinery spaces. All right, so uh, when I said machinery spaces, so we have machinery spaces that is the engine room. And then of course the steering gear compartment also has its own machinery thing. But these two compartments, the engine room and the steering gear compartment shall be separated. All right, they should be separate compartments. And the reason being that sometimes if there is any accident in either compartments, the other compartments, the functionality of the other compartment shall continue. So if there is any fire in the engine room, you should still be able to steer the ship through a separate steering gear flat and vice versa. If there is any incident with the steering gear flat, you should still be able to operate in the engine room. So the steering gear control systems comprises of the equipment through which orders are transmitted from the navigation bridge to the steering gear power units. Steering gear control systems comprise of transmitters, receivers, hydraulic control pumps and their associated motors. 
motor controllers, pipings and cables. The steering gear power unit is an electrical motor and its associated electrical equipment in the case of electric steering gear or an electric motor and its associated electric equipment and connected pump in the case of electro hydraulic steering gear or a driving engine and connected pump in the case of other hydraulic steering gear. The steering nozzle is a nozzle pivoting on a vertical axis and fitted around a screw propeller. Steering nozzles create steering forces by means of a deflected jet. They are usually applied at a highly loaded propeller of tugs, inland watercrafts and research vessels. Before I go into the main or different types of steering gear, you must know the difference between main steering gear and auxiliary steering gear. So the main steering gear basically comprises of the machinery, the rudder actuators, steering gear power units, if any, and ancillary equipment and the means of applying torque to the rudder stock. Example, a tiller or a quadrant. This is necessary for affecting movement of the rudder for the purpose of steering the ship under normal service conditions. The auxiliary steering gear on the other hand is the equipment other than any part of the main steering gear necessary to steer the ship in the event of failure of the main steering gear but not including the tiller, quadrant or components serving the same purpose. The auxiliary steering gear shall be of adequate strength and capable of steering the ship at navigable speed and of being brought speedily into action in an emergency. It should be capable of putting the rudder over from 15 degrees on one side to 15 degrees on the other side in not more than 60 seconds with the ship at its deepest sea going draft and running ahead at one half of the maximum ahead service speed or seven knots whichever is greater. So if your maximum ahead service speed is 16 knots, half of that is 8 knots. So then it should be able to put the rudder from 15 degrees on say port side to 15 degrees on say starboard side in not more than 60 seconds at its deepest sea going draft and at the speed of 8 knots. So if your full speed, sea speed is 16 knots, half of that is 8 knots and 8 knots becomes the greater speed. If your full sea service is, speed is 12 knots, half of 12 knots is 6 knots, then 7 knots is the higher speed. So you should be able to do so at a speed of 7 knots, whichever is the higher speed. Now I'll talk about the two types of the, basically the steering gear that we find normally on ships. The first one is the ram type electrohydraulic steering gear. Now a ram type electrohydraulic steering gear basically consists of either a two or four hydraulic lamps, four hydraulic rams connected by a link mechanism or what we call a Rapson slide mechanism to the tiller which turns the rudder. Now what you see here on the screen is a two ram electrohydraulic steering gear. You can also have a four ram electrohydraulic steering gear. So a link mechanism transfers the ram movement to the tiller and imparts maximum torque at 35 degrees of rudder movement. The Rapson slide mechanism consists of a block or a sleeve, all right, pivoted to the ram and guided by a cross head and arranged to slide on the tiller arm so that the moment arm increases as the rudder angle increases. The rams are moved by hydraulic fluid supplied under pressure by one or two pumps. Usually two independent pumping units are provided. They are connected so that either may be used to operate the gear, thus eliminating the classification society rule requirement for an auxiliary steering gear. Now note in a passenger ship under normal service conditions, one unit works. In a cargo ship, both unit works at the same time. So you have the steering gear one and steering gear two motors running. You can switch over, but sometimes you can, you have both the motors running on cargo ships. On passenger ships, however, you have only one motor running. 
Then we have the rotary vane steering gear. The rotary vane system works by introducing pressure into compartments formed between a stator fixed to the ship's structure and a rotor attached to a rudder stock. There are two or three vanes on the rotor and an equal number on the stator to form the compartments. When steering effort is required, the pressure is increased in the appropriate compartments. The pressure reacts against the fixed vanes and pushes the rotor and the rudder stock in the required direction. To increase the available torque, the diameter of the unit is enlarged, although it is generally smaller than an equivalent ram type arrangement. Hydraulic pressures are also lower as the working area is larger than the total of the rams on the ram type of steering gear. This type of steering gear provides another advantage in the form of the degree of rudder movement that is up to 65 degrees for a porch grown type of system and up to 45 degrees for an Alstein's Frydenbow system. With ram operated gear, the maximum degree of rudder movement is limited by the stroke of the cylinders and the scope of the slider mechanism. One potential disadvantage of this system is that if it is a fault inside the unit, all steering can be lost and specialist repairs is required. With ram type of gear for larger vessels, there are four single acting cylinders. So if one ram fails, then the steering is not totally disabled. The working parts are also accessible in the event of a necessary repair and the rams are relatively simple to replace if a spare is carried. So this was my lecture on the steering gear systems, the different type of steering gear systems and the components of a steering gear systems. Uh, deck officers should know more or less what I have said in my lecture. You don't have to go too deep into it. However, if you are being asked uh, questions which are deeper than what I have discussed in this video, please let me know. I'll be happy to address it as well. The reason I don't go too deep into this subject firstly is because uh, this is uh, more of an engineering oriented subject. Uh, if I go deeper into it, uh, it's hard for deck officers to comprehend or visualize what is going on because you are not exposed to these systems at that depth on the ships. So this is uh, purely from making notes purposes. You can make notes on basis of this and you can write something or answer questions based on this topic in the oral examination. So I look forward to your comments and feedback regarding this video. Uh, whether you like it or you don't like it, uh, please let me know. Thanks for now and keep studying hard. Bye.